Hey everyone, I'm David Caraccio. Thank you for tuning in today. We're gonna to be going over a couple different things and it's been a lot of uh, questionable uh, contents or questionable articles that have been going out about the different options you have as a homeowner when it comes to loan forbearance. And I wanna talk about the different options because I actually you know, personally have three mortgages. I called all servicing companies. Um, I won't give out the names to them, but the three different companies, two of them are very large companies that we probably use as a personal banks. The other one is a third party company that I got sold off to, but outstanding uh, servicing company. Now, before I get started, I do wanna tell you that every company is gonna have a little bit of different modification, but generally what I found in calling my three companies that I have my, uh, my loan service by, are these uh, three topics I'm gonna talk about today. And that's the difference between loan forbearance, the loan repayment program, and the, uh, the loan modification. Now, all three of these have their unique uh, pros and cons to them. And this purpose of this video is not to tell you what program is best for you uh, in your current situation, but really to just tell you the different options you have out there. Because when I called, uh, the first person I spoke to with all these companies told me the only option I had was to do loan forbearance. So when you really dive into it and ask them other questions and ask key terms or talk to a specific person, you're gonna find out there's a lot of other opportunities out there for you depending on your current situation. So this is just to educate yourself, get you into the best mindset so when you do call your company, if you need to, if you do call your mortgage company, you do have more information to back you up to understand what you're about to do because this is a very critical portion or critical part of um, you know getting through this financial crisis if you are in one. If you can make payments, I would recommend just make your payments. Continue forward as much as possible. But if you are affected through COVID-19 and you've lost your job or you've been re uh, reduced on the amount of hours you're working or there's a family dynamic that's changed where you do need some type of uh, help or you know payment opportunity uh, to, to uh, help you through these couple next couple months, use it just you know like i said i'm not giving you exactly what to do i'm just telling you what options are available so the first one i'm going to talk about the loan forbearance program now when you call the uh, company if you call your your servicing company or even if you go online to make your payments they're going to have a banner somewhere over there that says covid 19 loan forbearance program here this is what most of the companies want you to do they want to use or have you utilize this loan forbearance program now from the three companies i called they all have different opportunities but for the most part, they're going uh, you know, automatic up to six months right now. You can go three or two, three or six months to so the options I saw between the three companies. At the end of the six months, you're able to automatically renew for an additional six months or an initial two, three or six, depending on how you break it down. But essentially up to 12 months of forbearance. Now forbearance is not forgiveness. Unfortunately, this is the big negative of the forbearance. When you defer your payments, you know, that six months, on the seventh month, the entire six months plus the seven month of loan payment is due all at once. This is gonna be hard because if you cannot make your payment as it is, because you're not making income, you're not gonna be able to all of a sudden magically pull out six months of, of loan payments ready to go. This is just to kind of get you skirt, skirted through to get you to the other side of the bridge. Hopefully, you know, jobs start opening up in the next month or two. Um, you know, that's been optimistic, let's say two to three months. And that gives you the additional, you know, six to 12 months to start to recapture and recoup and save that money for those payments. Now, during the forbearance period, if you can make a full payment, you're allowed to. If you can make a partial payment, you're allowed to. You're allowed to make inc incremental payments throughout your forbearance period. So keep that in mind. If, if you just apply for it and automatically get it, because um, you, you are pretty much, as long as there's a government backed loan, it's, it's, it's going to be pretty much an automatic process. As long as you apply for it, you can make partial payments, you can make full payments, you can make extra payments, you can do whatever you want, but there won't be any penalties for late fees, there won't be any payments for not making any payments. It allows you that grace period to get caught up on your financial uh, aspects to be able to get to that point. Just be aware, don't fall into that big U or W that we're about to go into potentially is where a lot of people are gonna be coming out of the market, we're, we're doing good, people are getting their jobs back, people are ramping up their, their income, and then here all of a sudden, here's seven months of, of mortgage payment or even 13 months of mortgage payment due all at once. And now you're just gonna be a huge wave of foreclosures coming through. I feel, and this is just my personal opinion, this isn't something I've read or anything like that, I have a feeling that the government's gonna step in and stop a lot of these foreclosures from happening by, by doing a lot of these other programs that we're about to talk about. Um, they're already saying the government, the Fed, you know, released recently saying that, you know, mortgage companies have to have good faith in, uh, in helping um, customers 
make sure that they don't uh, foreclose. So we'll see what that eventually means. Right now they're just saying, hey, do what you need to do to stop people from closing. That's all they're saying right now, but you know, long term we'll see what the effects are. Now the positive of this is it's immediate. The loan forbearance process, you could go online for most of these companies and just hit um, apply. You select how many months you want to apply for for your initial batch, and there you go, you're on that program. No, no late fees, nothing. Um, there are a couple issues with that though. I mean, that's, uh, the big part of it is just the, the fact that you're gonna have to pay all of the mortgage payment all at once. The other portion is you gotta figure out where on that anamorization schedule you're gonna fall upon when you do make those payments. Um, you know, when I called the companies, they didn't even know, you know, when, when it comes time to owe that seven months, where, what part of that payment is going towards principal, interest, or escrow payment, you know, how is that all working out? They don't even know. They haven't, you know, the, the people I spoke to at least, obviously the, the higher ups probably know, uh, but the people I spoke to, they said, hey, look, you know, if you're making $2,000 a month, you know, at the end of six months, it's gonna be $12,000 a month, right? Six times two, <laughs> it's 12,000. Um, so that's essentially what the blanket statement was. They don't know exactly where that payment is gonna go to or how it's gonna be divided, but as soon as we start getting closer and guarantee it's gonna be more uh, you know, open knowledge for a lot of people. The other program now is the repayment program. Now, what most companies are gonna to try to do is send you straight to forbearance. And then at the end of forbearance, you have the opportunity to either make all full payments or kind of split off into these two other decisions. So you, A is just pay the payment off, you know, catch all the way up. B is the loan forbearance. C is the loan, for, uh, loan, I wish for loan forgiveness, right? Yeah, you just don't worry about the loan. Uh, loan modification. Now for the repayment program, is the positive for this one is that you get to keep your current mortgage. So when you, uh, when you go, your, whatever your interest rate is, whatever your terms are, those all stay the same. Essentially, I don't wanna say it's a second lien, but think of it as a second lien. With the loan repayment, they're tacking on the amount that you owe, let's say for the last 12 months, and they're gonna say, okay, that 12 month payment is gonna be divvied out over the next 12 months. So if you did, let's say six months, then it'll be six months over the course of 12 months. However, the modification program you and your mortgage company decide to do will be uh, added to the top of your loan payments. Now this also is not necessarily always the best category to fall in. If you are normally struggling to just make $2,000 in you know, monthly payments of or mortgage payments, and in the following year after being you know, wiped clean of your savings accounts, now you're being asked to make $4,000 per month for the next 12 months. That once again is gonna put you in that position where you might be in foreclosure. The best thing you can do is if you still have your job, make the payment. Don't worry about the forbearance. Don't don't mess with your loan. Just keep going as possible if you can. That's that's kind of the blanket statement. Now, obviously, some people are going to be able to take advantage of this. Use specific um, uh, uh, loopholes to make this a better situation for themselves. But for the majority of people, if you can make the payment, just just make the payment and get through this. All right. Um, the negative of the rebate payment program is it does have a negative effect on your credit score. Now, I'm not a CPA. I'm not a credit specialist. But what I do know is when I talk to the three companies, they're saying this will be reported as a negative asset where it will actually show as, you know, it will reduce your credit score and it will be, a, a, you know, from what they're saying, a long-term effect on your credit. That's kind of a negative piece to it. The other one we have is a loan modification. And honestly, everyone's situation can be different, but honestly, the loan modification is also, a lot of people call this a deferment program. They're deferring the payments to the end of their mortgage cycle. This one I see, where most people might want to go towards. Once again, this is just kind of my opinion, but the loan modification doesn't have a negative impact on your credit score, but it does put you under the status under your loan, saying that you are under an assistance program. The reason being because the first three months, they need to make sure they've called the trial period. This is all three companies pretty much to say the same thing. First 90 days, you're in a trial period to make sure to ensure that you are able to make those first 90 days with the new program, uh, the new loan modification. So you're under a trial period. As long as you make those uh, 90 days, what they're telling me is that that uh, loan modification, that loan assistance uh, credit dean will drop off. It will no longer show up. I'm hoping that's the case, because if that's the case, you know, three months, yeah, you might not be able to buy anything on credit, but after that, if you're able to continue making payments like you were before, or however your new setup is, you should be good, right? Um, the negative on this one is it does draft new documents. So if you're at 25 years on your mortgage, uh, you know, you're left on your loan, it might reset to 30, it might keep it at 25. But the big thing I have a concern about is the interest rate. 
let's say you, know, you locked in a prime, you know, perfect time in the market, you lock it in at 2.75, you have an awesome uh, VA loan, or you have an awesome uh, conventional loan, uh, FHA loan, and had amazing percentages. Well, let's say six months, 12 months from now, we don't know where the credit or the, the interest rate will be. There's a potential that the interest rates might skyrocket once we get out of this, because everyone's trying to refinance um, or, or do loan modifications. Um, if that does happen, then you might be put in a position where your interest payment's a lot higher than you currently have it. So that is the one negative uh, aspect of that. And then also it's, it's essentially restarting your entire loan cycle depending on how you negotiate that with your current lender. So the big takeaways is if you want to do something other than loan forbearance, ask to talk to the loss and preventions team. If you talk to just a regular customer service, they're not really gonna be that much information. In fact, when I call all three companies, I try to ask the key questions I wanted to, to, to pull out from them. And the majority of the customer, or actually I say majority, all the customer care services reps were not able to answer any other questions other than to read a script about forbearance. They're reading a script right off the paper that's on their website. So if you're gonna do forbearance, just go online, look at their key pieces of it and just, just apply for it right now if you need to. But if you're doing anything else, I would recommend asking for the loss and prevention team, go over to them, let them know that you are recording the call and that anything that you do guys discuss, you would request to have that in a writing format. It's not a script format where they're telling you over the phone, but in writing. So that way you know exactly what you're getting into. I asked them to send me documents for both the repayment program and the loan modification program. And I read through all the documents. I wanted to understand what was that actually meant because if someone just tells you over the phone and you don't have a recording of it and you don't have you know written documents of it, it's gonna be really hard to, to uh, take recourse if, if something does go wrong. So be very careful what you guys decide to do, guys. This is just an educational video, trying to tell you different options that are out there because right now there's so much, I don't wanna say false information, but misguided information out there. Um, please take this, you know, research it more, do more in, 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 uh, investigation on your end. Every mortgage company is gonna be a little bit different, so make sure you call your specific mortgage company, your service provider, and ask them these questions too. Will it impact my credit? What is the long-term effect of this? Will it redo, uh, renew, uh, renew my loan documents? Will I have to potentially get a new interest rate? Um, if I do the loan, uh, uh, loan forbearance, am I no longer allowed to do the repayment program or the loan modification? Once again, I think there's gonna be a lot of government um, pushback on this to stop people from going to foreclosures, but in case that they don't, you wanna do the initial education now. Learn what the programs are available to you now, so that way you're not trying to chase down or trying to re, uh, uh, you know, take back what went wrong and now try to fix a, a worse situation that you are in you know, six months or 12 months from now. That's all I have, guys. I really hope you guys uh, uh, enjoy this video. I'm gonna be coming out with a lot more content just like this, so if you haven't uh, already followed our channel, go ahead and log into our uh, uh, YouTube channel and, and go ahead and subscribe. We're gonna have a lot more content coming out just like this. Until next time, have a great day.